welcome back to Box Delights. Are you ready for some wargaming? We're going to start with something relatively straightforward in this genre. It's not something I've shown you much of, if at all, actually, before. But this one's called Fleet Commander Nimitz. It's in the Commander series. Previously we had Field Commander. This one's going to show you some naval battles. This is one that people have been requesting, so I'm going to show you how this one plays. There's a number of different campaigns to play. We're going to start with the first campaign, the recommended campaign, 1942. There's further campaigns with more forces, more reinforcements, different levels of supply. Our objectives are described here on the campaign evaluation. Hold as many objectives as we can so that these state the names of the different places on the map that we're going to have to hold. Okay, have our forces control. We're going to play through turns, and this is the turn tracker down here. Once we move past November, December 1942, then the game ends, and then we evaluate how many of these objectives and uh, rank our victory or defeat accordingly. We've got a tactical battle map, which I'm going to put out, and we've got a score sheet as well which you can use to record your campaigns and what objectives and what evaluations they had. Okay, let me place this one over here. There's lots of units. I've got two trays worth of these units. Every campaign has its own set of units. So, for example, we've got aircraft for the 42, 43, 44 and 45 campaign. And I've got two trays of tokens, one for the Allies and one for the Japanese. As you can see from the map, we're in the Pacific. There are Australian forces down here that can assist us as well. And we are the US. Fleet Commander Nimitz was, and there's a little bit of history in here, uh, Chester Nimitz was Commander-in-Chief of the US Pacific Fleet in 1941. Like a lot of war games, there's going to be quite a bit of setup to get you going. So here's our setup for 1942, and this is pretty typical. You will have different levels of forces and different locations, and it'll ask you to place all those forces on the board. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Come back and join me once I'm done. These are our starting US forces in the Hawaiian Islands here down in Australia. We've got our reinforcements up here, one ship in the west coast and a set here at port. In terms of infantry, we don't have a great many boots on the ground. We've got a battalion here in New Caledonia, Solomon Islands, Borneo. We've got two battalions in the west coast. Everything else is in reserve, in reinforcements, except for the 25th American infantry, which is sitting here in, in the Hawaiian Islands. We have fighters and bombers, these are some Australian land based aircraft, and you can see we have quite a few up here in the reserves. And there's also some aircraft carrier based um, aircraft. These are just going to stay in the supply until we move on to this battle map, and this is when your aircraft carriers can. We we'll kind of assume that they're holding these planes, but you don't need to put the units on the map, and then they'll come out and, and enter the battle. Let's go ahead now and set up all the Japanese forces. You'll notice that the Japanese have substantially more ships mobilised. Before we place out the infantry and aircraft for the Japanese, which I'm going to do, uh, these all need to be randomised for the solo um, game, because the order they come out is going to be important. Just make sure when you do, you put their full side, not the reduced side, face up. Okay, reduced is when they take damage. Let me finish up then. So we've got a whole bunch of infantry, land-based aircraft, and then again carrier groups that are going to go off to the side for the battle map. Job done. There we go, and once more I've stacked and randomised each of the 
infantry and land-based aircraft. We also have a bunch of battalions that we're going to store. These are the Japanese battalions, so they're spare. And we also have a bunch of Japanese battle plans. We're going to place those in a cup to draw from. Okay, so these are unpredictable tactical decisions that the AI is going to be making. Next, we're going to place our objectives on the map. So remember, during our setup, we talked about how we have objectives and how many objectives we hold on to determines our level of success. So let's mark those now. And we're going to begin the game holding some of these. If the US are the only force having land-based aircraft or infantry at those locations, then we control those objectives. If there's any Japanese land forces or if there aren't any US land forces then they remain under enemy control. So you can see for the beginning of the game we've got New Guinea, the Gilbert Islands and Samoa. Samoa unoccupied, there's a battalion of Japanese forces down here and then here at New Guinea we're likely to see some conflict going on. I've got two Australian Royal Air Force here some Japanese, the 55th Infantry, and a bunch of planes. We're almost ready to go. I'm going to grab the campaign turn marker. We'll place it here at the start. And we're ready to begin. Behind the decisions which moved the fleet ever closer to Japan, as the tempo of the war increased, and the relentless tide of American sea power swept forward, was the constant evaluation, the continuous re-examination of his strategy, under his direction, Halsey, Spruance, Turner and others used their forces with masterly precision and deadly effect, setting the pace for subordinate commanders. At New Guinea and the Marianas, the enemy felt our power. Let's begin term one as we move into January, February 1942. There is a handy sequence of play down here. You can see the first step, advance, turn, counter, and then it's the US resupply. Each scenario will tell you how many supply points you get. So for the United States, it's 20 points in this campaign, seven reinforcement points. And we're gonna to get to spend these now. We can spend these only on reinforcements, whereas our supply points can be used for reinforcements and other stuff that's going to go on, and I'll show you those shortly. Okay, so let's think about how we want to spend our points. I am interested in this battle going on here in New Guinea. I can see that the Caroline Islands has got some subs on the top. And then the crews are here. In terms of ships, this number at the bottom here is the depth charge of value. You can see these are all two. The top number here is the anti-aircraft number. So four here, four here. And then the second number is the surface attack. So on this battleship, we've got six. You'll notice the aircraft carriers have superior attack against aircraft. Right, they're both four, but the carrier has a superscript value of 2, what that means is if you hit with a 2 or lower you're actually going to do an additional point of damage. All right? So these can do one hit each, the carrier can do an additional point of damage on a better roll. So I think we're going to take the, the carrier at a cost of 5, but I also want to get some infantry out there. So let's see, some ground troops Again, the cost is in the square brackets, so you can see that we've got the 1st and 2nd Marine at a cost of 2, and then these other infantry units at uh, a cost of 1. But the Marines have a higher attack value of 5 versus 3, and this is ground attacks only. So I think I'm going to take the 1st Marine, and I'm also going to take this Australian infantry at a cost of 1 because I've already spent more than I have in reinforcement points this is going to come from supply. I think we'll take an aircraft as well. Once more the cost is in this square bracket. These are all bombers because they have these squares in the bottom. 
value in the blue box is their attack value against ships. The value in the brown box to the right is their ground attack value, so that will be attacking infantry and airfields. This is the dogfight value, so this shows you their ability against other aircraft. You'll notice that we have things like this fighter here, which doesn't have any capacity to drop bombs. Once more, I'm going to take the Australian Air Force Bomber Group 2 at a cost of 2. Now, the only thing I find a little confusing is with the carriers. You know, all the other costs are in the square brackets. On carriers, they're in the curly, in the round brackets, parentheses. Okay, the square bracket one, that's going to be used for the battle. We'll show you that later. All right, so we've got all our stuff. We've paid our costs. All US troops go to the West Coast. Australian forces go down here in Australia. Now one thing to note, you don't have to spend all your reinforcements or resupply. You can save them for a later turn if you wish. That's resupply done. We could on later turns be kind of repairing ship, uh, ships and what have you here. As it goes, we're going to do some scouting now. So we can go and start scouting around to see what the Japanese are going to be doing, get a kind of the jump on their movements. When it's the Japanese movement turn, they're going to start ordering their troops around. Okay, But what we can kind of do here is kind of bring that step forward so we can see what their orders are going to be prior to us making our decisions. But that is going to cost us, and it's going to cost us in supply points. And this is where we can use these scouting markers. I'm going to use one here in the Philippines, two here in the Caroline Islands. I'm also going to place one here in Japan. So that's going to cost me four supply points. Now there's one important step that you can do here to help you out, because there's some troops that, are, that can't move, some Japanese troops that can't move. There's no restriction in East Asia and Japan, but there are a number that can't. Any place where if the last ground, ground troops, so infantry or ground-based aircraft, would be removed, they can't move. Okay, The Japanese can't abandon one of these places. So we mark those as already moved, effectively. So you can see there's no point in scouting these, because we know they're not going to move anyway, right? Now we get to roll some dice, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to order those forces that we've scouted. Okay, so why don't we start up here in Japan. We roll 1d10. We've got a 7. We can record this with our Japanese movement order token, and this says join a battle. Battle says I need to take two ships, one infantry, and then either zero or two land-based aircraft. That depends if there are any Japanese forces ashore in the destination. If there are, we take two. If there are none, we take none. Now the battle command itself says join a location that has both Japanese and US forces. There's only two such islands. We have Borneo and New Guinea. So you just have to determine randomly which one they're going to take on. So we'll just roll a die, 1 to 5, they go to Borneo. 6 to 10, they'll go to New Guinea. Let's see what they do. It's a 1, they're heading to Borneo. So remember, it's two ships. There are Japanese forces aboard, so they're going to take two land-based aircraft as well. There aren't any land-based aircraft here in Japan. So we're just going to take two ships, and it's remember this is randomly, we randomise these. So they're taking carrier Shukaku and battleships Hiei and Kirishima. So those are two. And we'll put them in transit to Borneo. They haven't arrived here, okay, but they're on their way. Um, and they're going to take one infantry unit. Well, there's two battalions here, so they're going to take one battalion as well. And they need a transport here to distinguish them from this battalion. So we just take a transport, 
place it on top, put the battalion inside, so this is transporting the troops, these are free for them to take, and then we put a marker on here to say they're in transit down here. So notice there's no limit to how far these ships can go, it's all about the orders instead. Okay. We've got a lot of scouting here, so let's see what, uh, what these set of Japanese forces will do. Let's roll. We've got a two, which is a hold. No movement and gain one resupply. This tells us that six ships are going to hold two infantry and three land-based aircraft. This resupply marker we're going to place on the board. So one resupply marker in this box. Then we take six ships. There's only three here. Two infantry, infantry, and what was it? Three land-based aircraft. Three. And because they're holding, all we're going to do is we're going to move, th remove this, and instead we're going to put a moved marker here to show that they're they're at their final destination. They're staying in the Philippines. Lastly we've got two here at the Caroline Islands. Let's see what they're going to do. So first scouting. Let's roll. We've got a 10 which is a sortie. This is going to take three ships, one infantry and then or two, remember if those Japanese forces are sure, two land-based aircraft, two, the closest objective with US presence. The closest means the fewest points, okay, so this time distance does make a difference, we're using that term closest. There's two objectives which are just one spot away from the Caroline Islands, there's New Guinea and the Solomon Islands and they both have US forces there. So once more we're going to randomly determine which one they're going to go for. 1 to 5 here, 6 to 10 there. It's a 10, so they're heading to the Solomon Islands. Remember it's three ships. 1, 2, 3. One infantry and one land-based aircraft, but of course these can't move. They're in transit. Okay, so these haven't arrived yet, but they're going to. Now, any time we can't take enough infantry to a location where there's US forces, then the order demands, then instead we take one battalion from the battalion box. Put it on the transport. And that'll be in transit too. Okay, the next scouting marker, let's roll again. Is a three. That's a refit. This is an interesting one. Four ships are going to head back to Japan. We've only got two here, so yeah, they're heading back to Japan for a refit. We'll put them in transit. Okay, that's left the Caroline Islands rather vulnerable, but we're vulnerable here uh, with this all-out attack on the Solomon. Isles. Yeah, okay. Next time we're going to decide what we're going to do with the US troops. We're going to move the US forces, the Japanese are going to take the remaining of their orders, and then we'll start resolving battles. Before we start moving those Japanese troops, though, there are a few more that I should have marked as moved. Any infantry that share a location with US. By the way, every time I say US, it also includes Australia. So this is a shorthand for US and Australia. Like here in Borneo, then they can't move either. So we'll just put a move marker on him, on the 55th. Down here, I think that's it. Remember, none of these others have arrived yet.